I am joined right now by perhaps the best Twitter follow in all of professional wrestling. Is this like your thing? Do you feel the claim to being the best person on Twitter? I'm starting to. It's kind of weird. Like, I guess, like, <laughs> you know, before all this is like, you know, professional wrestler and Twitter person. I was like a Twitter personality who happens to wrestle. <laughs> Which, by the way, it's Nyla Rose. I just got into the Twitter <laughs> right off the bat. Um, when you said Twitter, they probably knew exactly, they knew. apparently. You're like a Twitter influencer. <laughs> is there like pressure to like always have the quippy tweet? So it's a weird thing. Like there at this point, yeah, there's kind of a pressure. Like <laughs> I'll go to tweets and I was like, oh, is that too stupid? Like whereas <laughs> before I literally was just any dumb thing that popped in my head. Yeah. And I'm like second guessing myself, but <sighs> It's the worst. I remember I was watching um, the Lady Gaga documentary and she was um, with um, Florence Welsh. Is that right? Um, from Florence the Machine. And she was like, I don't know how you just post on your Instagram. There's all of these people on there. Like, how do you just frivolously put something out there? And yeah, I feel like once you have like a certain amount of following, you're like, oh my God, people are actually like listening and paying attention to this. That you're like, do I post this? I don't know. 100%. That's exactly what it's like. It's like, oh, they're actually paying attention now so <laughs> maybe this will go to drafts I'll oh my god <gasps> can we just dedicate this entire podcast to your drafts on we your twitter we probably could oh my god there's probably some really great stuff on there um okay so then you like also have to mesh in like your instagram in these like sexy photos <laughs> putting those out there like what goes into the sexy photo shoot putting it out there because i'm like Anytime I take a picture that I'm like, is this kind of a little bit sexy? I kind of freak. I'm like, people don't want that from me. And I, I feel like I always get in my own head about that. That's definitely some of your own head stuff. Because okay. like, because you're you're gorgeous. People definitely want that from you. Oh, I, you. I promise you people want that from you. But I totally get that feeling because I have the same thing. I'm like, no. Like everyone even... thinks I'm like their sister. So they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nobody wants to see that from me. But then I'm like, I think they like do. five people probably want to see that from me. But at the end of the day, I do it for me. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right, I thought this was cool. I'll put it out there. Do with it what you will. Yeah. Like people are always going to talk trash. So I'm going to give them something good to talk trash about. People sure love to talk a little trash. I didn't think that we were going to get into this so early on in the interview. But here we are talking about a little trash. Um, I mean, let's just address the ringside news bullshit. Yeah. That happened recently. Um, what is like your reaction to somebody I guess like somebody having that opinion and so blatantly putting it out there and being so ignorant, like how, like how, how was your reaction to, to that? I laugh because at this stage in the game, it's all recycled jokes. It's nothing right. I haven't heard before. Um, it, you know, sometimes it stings a little, sometimes things seep through the cracks. It can be a little challenging, mm -hmm. but for the most part, these are some very uncreative people. Hey, anybody out there listening, let me help you out. Uh, a good joke would be the fact that I just recently wrote an issue of X-Men. So who better than to write the X-Men than an X-Man? Oh! See, there you go. You want some original material? Why do I have to help you hate me? You guys are so unoriginal, so not funny. Like, yeah. so, and guess what? Now you can't use that one because I took the power away. <laughs> Give that writer's credit, suckers. So it was it was really weird. It felt like it felt like there was like some world star, like a good yes. hood fight going on, and you're sitting there watching it, and then you just caught like a wild punch to the face <laughs> because he's going in on TK for whatever reason, and he's like tweeting at him, just like these angry, hateful teats at Tony, and he's like blah 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 and Nyla, and I'm like, Whoa! Hold up. Like, what did I do? I just got here. <laughs> I just showed up to this party. Yeah. Everybody leave me alone. So it was it was pretty awkward. So crazy. Um, to that, and then you know, there was the incident with the fan with the sign in the crowd. Um, which is great that security kicked that person out right away. What's like the fallout for something like that? And like what what was like that day like for you having something like that? That one that was a little weird because it's like you, you definitely want the fans to come and express themselves and have a good time. And yeah, at, at its core, wrestling is the two people in the ring, but it takes so much more than that to create a match, to create a show, right? Because yeah. if the audience, the audience is, is absolutely important. They're integral. They're, they're the fourth person, if you will, because without them, it's just practice. Mm -hmm. It's just training. 
right? Yeah. So you definitely want them to have a voice. But like I always say, hate me for the right reasons. Sure. You know, and it's like, let's leave the comedy to the professionals. 100%. <laughs> you know, and it's it's like, I get what you were going for, but you totally missed the mark, bro. Yeah. And it's it's just... Uh, it, don't don't be ignorant. <laughs> what's what's like the reaction from like everybody else in the back? Like once you got to the back after having dealt with that? I mean, I know everybody came to your defense. So, yes, uh, a lot of people, super amazing, incredible family support vibe backstage. Everybody top to bottom. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know. But if, if he wants this out there, but um Let's let's say a a founding member of the House of Black, okay, was was very very supportive in the most gangsta way possible, <laughs> and I did not see that coming. Like I totally saw that coming from his personality. Like if you really know him, uh -huh. but like the way he did it, he was like he he was stretching, getting ready for his match, and I had just come back from mine, and he like walks up to me like real intense, like he's like, hey, what was that sign out there? And I was like, oh, this way he goes, yeah, f that guy, f yo. F that guy, like, he's like going hard. I'm like, okay, yes. okay, blacks are ride or die. Like, okay, if if I Respect. need if I need somebody on the squad, I know who to hit up. All right, so God bless him. That 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 made me Im immediately switch the vibe for me and just lifted me so yeah. high. Oh, uh, thank God. Okay, enough spending time on douchebags that don't even deserve our time of right. talking about it. But I, I do think it's important to talk about the repercussions of things like that and, and how it's affecting Absolutely. you. But now Absolutely. we get to move past that. Let's just talk about you in wrestling. Where does your love of wrestling come from? Uh, it's wrestling is such a uh, it's I don't know. Like I got bit by the wrestling bug young. Um, I my grandmother used to watch it and just little old ladies from that era. Love it. They were all little Freddie Blassies at the show with their canes, <laughs> like ready to like knock people out. And she loved wrestling. She used to tell me all the stories when she would go down to the armory and watch the show. Yeah. So that was her thing. That was her jam. So we would watch hours and hours of wrestling, like any anything that was on, she would be watching it. Her and I, that was a way that we bonded. Mm -hmm. So she is really who indoctrinated me into the world. So yeah. I grew up as a fan and I just always loved it. There was a lull, you know, you kind of fall out of it for sure. a little bit, um, but picked right back up at some point, like middle school. Mm -hmm. And this this was the slippery slope. <laughs> I So we had a teacher advisory class. I walk in, I'm wearing an Undertaker shirt. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like his old body bag shirt, whatever, not important. But I walk in I'm new, I had just moved from Washington, D.C., new in Virginia, new at this school, just new, 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 new. Who are my people? <laughs> <laughs> Super new at this school and just me, awkward, awkward teenager at this point, not knowing where I fit in, still, you know, behind the scenes struggling with stuff with myself going mm -hmm. on, not knowing where I fit in. I walk into this TA class, which essentially was like a free period. That's why I mentioned that. Let's bring that up. But it's like a free period. You kind of do whatever you want. There's a kid in like tucked in the corner wearing a Shawn Michaels shirt, reading old WWF magazine. And I'm like, my people. <laughs> it was a it was a really awkward meet cute because like it wasn't like romance or anything. But like I walk in, he looks up, sees my shirt. I see his shirt. We're like waves me over. We just talk wrestling forever. <laughs> and, and that's really when it amped up. And yeah. we used to joke and say, oh, we're going to be wrestlers when we grow up. We're going to be wrestlers when we grow up. And that was how we were known in the school as the two wrestling goofs. Oh my gosh. I love that. It is funny. I mean, I feel like wrestling very much so is that you find your group, you find your people that are into it, that understand it and respect it on the same level that you do. When did it actually become the reality that you were like, okay, not only do I admire this craft, I love watching wrestling, but I want to actually do it. I want to get in a wrestling ring and I'm going to start training and start taking this seriously. It was right there that day. Like I knew I wanted to do it. I just didn't know how to approach doing it. Right. Yeah. I mean, how do you figure out how to like, how do I do this? Like, it seems like it's such a crazy hoop dream. It absolutely, it, it 100%. Like I could not put a better button on that. Um, but I remember we were watching something is back then back in the old days kids <laughs> we would exchange vhs tapes of wrestling <laughs> and there was a commercial for uh this school that's no longer around in baltimore not far from where we were living at the time and it was like wait there are wrestling schools ding, ding, ding. yeah and again because i'm so old 
the internet wasn't even a thing at this point. <laughs> kind so, of thank god but also makes it like, yes. a lot more difficult right so it wasn't like we could just jump on google because that was definitely not a thing there was like web crawler <laughs> um but eventually eventually we were we were able to like dig up some research and that's how we learned about independent wrestling and everything and you kind of like oh this might actually be possible like we might actually be able to be wrestlers because you always read biographies or heard stories yeah. And back then it was like, I live not too far from this old legend and I used to deliver newspapers and yeah. he took me under his wing and we would train <laughs> in a hot barn on old mattresses and that's how I got bed bugs. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was all these wild stories. Uh, but yeah, so we, we found out there were wrestling schools and we kind of put that away. We finished school, we went to college, got some college under our belt. Mm -hmm. By this point, the internet was a little bit more established. We were getting somewhere. We were getting somewhere. The dial up. <laughs> we found Kaida Pro Wrestling in Manassas, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, we went and checked it out. And, we, and that was that. We, we signed up pretty much on the spot. Okay, so what did you go to college for? So to be going to college, you spend your time there and then you're like, cool, cool, cool. I have my credentials that I now need, but now I'm ready to pivot to go back to the thing that I really want to do, which is professional wrestling. So I probably shouldn't say this because I supposed to be like encouraging, but like college was absolutely not for me. Oh, I didn't even attempt. That's actually <laughs> not true. I tried to get into broadcasting school and they're like, no, ma'am, we're good. Um, so suck a big one. Um, but still, no, I mean, it, it's not for everybody. It's, it's for the not. The, yeah. the, the structure of uh, the education system don't necessarily agree with it, mm -hmm. but you definitely need an education to so go out there and get one. That's my motivational speech for the day. I second that. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, like college just absolutely wasn't for me. I did. Uh, what did what did I even do? What's, what's <laughs> the know. arts? The arts one? Like a, just a general. Yeah, arts like a degree? general arts degree. Because yeah. like I I love I loved uh, production and like while waiting to learn what life had to do with wrestling and myself. I fell in love with performing just in general. Yeah. So I was acting, I was doing all this stuff. And I was like, okay, well, acting is a gamble. I'm, it's not guaranteed that I'll be in front of the camera. I should at least learn how to be behind the camera, yeah. learn how to run a studio, learn all this That's smart. other stuff. And if nothing else, it's a foot in the door. And then, mm -hmm. oh no, Nyla's in front of the camera again. You know, yeah. so that was- Sneaky I was, way in. I was always I like working that. it. I was always working it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so I went to school for liberal arts. Liberal go. arts. Got it. I okay. went to I went to school for liberal arts. Got a little bit a little bit of that under my belt. Um, and then I went to trade school for massage therapy. Oh, okay. Because I kind of figured that's something I can do literally anywhere, anywhere in the world. Yep. Um, so I put those two together specifically to backdoor my way into performing either wrestling or acting, but I figure those are two skills that would be very niche and invaluable mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. Wow. Okay, what other kind of performing were you doing? So if you're at this liberal liberal arts school, um, doing acting, doing all these other things, what, what were some of those things that you were kind of dipping your toe into the water with? Uh, community theater and then like some of the smaller professional theaters mm. in the DC area. Yeah. Uh, I was doing stage plays and then sending out thousands upon thousands of headshots. Isn't like I said, it's so funny to think of that those days when you're like, no, I need to like print off. I need 75 of these black and whites. And I, maybe we should throw some colors in there as well. Like get those headshots out there. Oh my God. Hey. With the resume stapled on the back. Like I said, <laughs> always working it. Right. So yeah. I got a job at a photo lab. Oh my God. Hey kids, genius. these were things you actually take film cameras to, uh -huh. <laughs> to develop the pictures. Um, I got a job at a photo lab, for the hookup for eight by tens and headshots at Thank little God. little to no cost. So that that was my way of like being able to run those prints off yeah. and do that. Um, so yeah, so uh, I was doing that, trying to get headshots out and just get myself out there. Yeah, and then, okay, so you have all that experience under your belt still in the, the performing world, which obviously that's so massive when you're stepping back in the world of pro wrestling. But when you get back into like, hey, I want to start taking some months, time to get back into wrestling and start to make a career out of this. What was kind of the first move after college? Uh, going into crippling debt. <laughs> Great. Love it. I love being broke. It's such a good time. Not stressful at all. Going immediately into crippling debt. Like I said, we found Kaida Pro Wrestling School um, and I went up and I took a tour of the place and I instantly fell in love with it. Like, you know, when you watch cartoons and like 
the character gets the dream thing. You hear the angels like, ah. <laughs> like yeah. I walked in, I saw the ring and I was like, I love you. Yeah. And I, I heard the angels sing, the light shone. And I was like, do you accept credit cards? <laughs> and, and, and he Back was like, it up. yeah, he was like, absolutely. We can run a credit card. You actually get a discount on tuition. I was like, let's do it. Brilliant. Threw the plastic down, charged my tuition, and I was signed up and ready to rock and roll. So when AEW comes around, and now there's this opportunity with um, what turns out to be this massive, amazing wrestling company, what was that opportunity like for you to to get that ball rolling and like meeting Tony and figuring out what AEW was going to be and what your role ultimately is going to be uh, within AEW? Uh, wild. It was absolutely wild. I never in a million years thought anything like this would happen. Yeah. So during that period, I had kind of, I was, I was in a slump, you know, like grinding away on the indies, trying to make a name for yourself and reaching out to some of the bigger name promotions, either getting no sold, people mm -hmm. just leaving you on read or like, Ugh. we don't have anything. We don't have anything. We don't have anything. Yeah. And I'm like, you gotta have something. Like you're bringing in people who I know for a fact have only trained for three months. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta have something like, yeah. And we're going to talk about hard, some hard stuff. I elephant in the room. It's like, I don't know if this is a black thing, if this is a lady thing, if it's a trans thing, yeah. but it's definitely a thing sure. why you're not hiring me. And I would prefer a more direct, absolute answer instead of this runaround. Yeah. Because now I have to like come back and bug you again in a few weeks. Yeah. And this, I'm not going anywhere. Just, you know, <laughs> let's just do this. Give me some table scraps. Something, yeah. give me a dark match, something. Yeah. Let me prove my worth. Uh, Oh. How sorry, like how frustrating is that? Like trying like have like just to have to have those conversations. And were people ever honest with you about what they were looking for or what they what the issue was? Some people and and some people may not like this out there, but like I respect them more when they're like, hey, we can't use you. Like totally respect your, you know, your trans identity, but we don't know what to do with that. Okay. Like I can respect that direct answer, mm -hmm. you know, like, first of all, it's not filled with hate. Like you, you saying, Hey, I respect you for what you're doing. I just don't know what to do with that. Yeah. That's a very honest answer. You're looking me in my face. You're telling me that I can respect that. Mm -hmm. But when you're like giving me the runaround, kind of shaking me off. Yeah. That messes with your mind. Yeah. Cause then now I'm like, how is it I'm good enough to get the attention of a genuine wrestling legend from around the world. Mm -hmm. Someone in Japan sees something in me that they're willing to bring me to Japan. Yeah. They introduce me to their other friends who are legends, Mako Saitomura, who instantly yeah. throws me on her shows. Yeah. So how is it they see something in me, but for some reason you don't, something's yeah. not adding up. Yeah. So things like that mess with your mind and you just have such a low self-worth at that mm -hmm. point so kind of to circle back by this point i had relegated myself maybe i'll step away from wrestling for a little bit and focus more on the acting mm -hmm. um i'm gonna do my last shot send out i i had formulated a whole uh plan of what i was gonna do my plan of attack excuse me of what i was gonna do while i was in J on my last tour in japan and i was like i'm gonna send out resumes uh you know eight by tens promos some matches. I'm going to send all this stuff out to these promotions. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Um, I get back to the States and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do this. You know, if this doesn't happen, I'll step away for a little bit, reinvent myself. Maybe I'll shake up the character. Like, I don't know, but something's got to give. And before I did any of that, I get a DM from Kenny Omega. Oh my gosh. Who I instantly thought was a lie. Yeah, right, right. You're like, is this a hacked account? What's happening here? Oh, 100%. So like, I, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a lie. And I'm like, yeah, right. What? Kitty, oh, my God, my ass, whatever. And I go and I look and I'm like, oh, sorry, sir. Yes, um, we can. I would love to discuss some things with you. And like, so we exchange and we discuss. But it was it was such a uh, blessing from the universe at that point, because I was so down on myself. And the universe was like, all right, you know, let's give her let's give her a bone. Let's yeah. give her something. So to be the first openly trans uh, wrestler signed to such a big promotion, do you feel that just the change that's happening or what change can still happen? I mean, whether it's in the LGBTQ plus storylines that are happening uh, in, in professional wrestling, how do you think that that should sort of change and evolve? Naturally, 
I think it should. I don't think anything should ever be forced mm -hmm. uh, because then it's just it seems fake and forced. Like people can see that. Yeah. Um, there definitely is a change and a shift happening. And it gets frustrating even for us, you know, for anyone out there, because we've kind of conditioned ourselves in this microwave society for instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So the second you put something out there on Instagram or Twitter, you get a like, yeah. you know, the second, you know, especially with the, with the high speed Internet and anything you you want to look up some information, you get results right away. Yeah. So we're kind of conditioned for input, output instantly. Yeah. So things are happening. Things are changing. They may not change and shift quite as much as we hope because mm -hmm. some of these other systems are deep rooted in the culture of things. Mm -hmm. But you take a look now compared to literally three years ago, only three years ago, and there's so many more people who are feeling comfortable and being out and being open and being themselves. Yeah. Compare that to five years before that. Yeah. Compare that to 10 years before that. There is a shift happening. There is a change happening. Yeah. People's minds and hearts are becoming more and more open and accepting. It's happening, folks. We're doing the work. We're putting ourselves out there. And it all begins with us. Be the change you want to see in the world. You live authentically. Now there's that rep representation. Because I didn't have anybody like me growing yeah. up. Yeah. So now I have to be who I didn't have growing up so that somebody does have that. God, there's so much in that too of like being the first person to do something and who were the people that you, like who were your wrestlers that you loved? Undertaker had the yeah, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, there, there were, there were a lot, uh, I could list go on for yeah. eight years. Jericho, Undertaker, Rey Mysterio, Lita, Trish, mm -hmm. uh, Jazz, Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, China. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there, there were just so many wonderful characters growing up that I saw that I just, something about them I gravitated towards. It's funny talking to just about like, how that change does take time. I just saw like a stupid headline where like I was talking about the women's tag titles in WWE and I was like, yeah, they just like, they never really took on the importance that I think everyone wanted them to, to begin with. And people thought I was like talking shit, but it's like, no, I'm not. But like women's wrestling has come such a long way. And like, when I think of like the eight years as with WWE from when I started to when I left, it's like, what a difference. That, that, that has happened in that. So like, of course, yeah. The, I mean, we're working towards making the tag titles feel important and to have these other divisions and whether it's having tag titles or you're having intergender wrestling, like there's all these things in their space for them, but it's not going to be that instant. Here we go. It is as important as the intercontinental right. title. It is as important as the AEW uh, world championship. So I mean, yeah, those things do take time Absolutely. and it's not, yeah, you can't like kick it when it's down to be like, oh, it's not. It's not the thing that we want it to be. It's like, it's got to get there. As as much as we would love to just like introduce anything, you yeah. know, whatever it is, introduce it and it just instantly be where we want it. That, that would be ideal. Like, I wish we of could course. do that. I wish we could do that. But that's just not the way anything works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Literally anything. Look at anything in life. The White House. The, when it was first built, it was just a building. Like, whatever. Yeah. But now it's like this important symbol of American heritage. Yeah. You know, so it takes time for things to build up that importance. Why do you think the fans are so attached to the women's roster in AEW? I think the fans really are gravitating towards uh, the women there. You guys have really been building up a lot of great talent and stars are being built within that company. But what's what's your take on that? Um, because I'm a part of it. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> da, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I think, I think, and this is just my own theory, I think a big part of that is kind of why so many people love AEW in general. Uh, we just, we feel more authentic, more, more grounded because a lot of us came from the Indies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us were touring the country and you saw us on the smaller stages and you feel a little bit more invested. You feel like this is, you know, a cousin or a sister or, you know, you've seen them grow. Yeah, you've, you've been there. You've from seen like these the people grow literally you from the get go. And buy their merch when they're selling them at the counters, like all those. Exactly. And you've had these one on one encounters with them at the at the Indies and, and now they're elevated. So you you feel like a part of you is yeah. up there with them. Yeah. And, and that's that's just my personal take, but I think that's a big part to do with why people feel so invested in yeah. us. Yeah. Um, so some more character stuff for you. 
Um, it was an active decision for you. I believe this is based off of the research that I did prior to sitting down here, but your decision to keep your gender identity out of your wrestling character, what went into that? And like, what were your thoughts on putting together your character as my elbow falls off the <laughs> table and I almost <laughs> fall over? <laughs> uh, the answer is very simple and I wish it was a little bit more in depth for you, but I don't win matches with my gender. It's not important. I also feel like on a on a theatrical level, it's not entertaining. And it kind of shouldn't be because Pigeon this isn't so the medium too, for right? that. Yeah. Um but but you know, it, it's important as a for as a as a fact of who I am, but like what I do in the ring and the reason that I'm performing, the reason that I'm out there wrestling, mm -hmm. it has no bearing on that whatsoever. So yeah. why make it a part of the character? It's yeah. part of who I am. Yeah. But not what I do. Right. No, it's, I think that's like, it's so important. And there's, there's so many things that you have to think about too. And like putting your character together and what parts of you are the ones that are going to shine within the ring and what makes sense from like that performance standpoint of, right. of what really gets that moment to like shine in there. Um, your championship run, what would you have done different with your championship run? Anything that you would have changed with it? Sure, COVID. Oh my God. <laughs> How brutal was that, right? That was rough. Um, I I literally was stuck in DC. And I yeah. love I love my hometown to death, but I genuinely couldn't leave for like yeah. two months, like yeah. two and a half months, something crazy. Um, so I think that was a big, big to do with the nail in the coffin of just not being able to really get off the ground and really get the momentum behind it. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. You know, second time's a charm, right? When, when, I, when I get the belt back, we'll, we'll have a good run there. 100%. Um, working with Vicky. What is working with Vicky like? I personally adore Vicky Guerrero. <laughs> I think she is one of the best heels in the entire business. Um, what has it been like for you working with her and what kind of things have you learned? Wild. From it's been absolutely <laughs> wild. Uh, she has such a wonderful mind for everything uh just her ideas the the things she brings to the table she'll point out something so small and i'm like oh my god and think about it that way and then we can kind of flip things on its head and and we got some things out there mm. that we just have a blast and i think that's a big part of it is having fun with it you know if they if the audience sees us having fun then they're going to have fun too certainly because it's no. genuine 100% um what who else do you want to see on like in the women's division in AEW who is your forbidden door bring them in let's get into a program with somebody ooh that's a tough one um there's there's quite a few uh people out there and and they've they've kind of scratched at it we've had We've been able to get a couple of, of people that I think would make excellent additions coming through on uh, AW Dark mm -hmm. and getting getting yeah. a, sh a shot to shine. And a few of them have been back here and there. Uh, but forbidden. Are there some like names that we're like really focused uh, on here? Trisha Dora, yeah. Amber Rodriguez, I think, uh, Sahara Seven, some really good people. But if we're talking forbidden door, people that we haven't we want seen. That yet. Forbidden we want door. that forbidden door. We want that forbidden door. Um, I would say one of my old uh, running buddies slash tag partners slash rivals, Takumi Aroha mm -hmm. from Marvelous in Japan. Uh, her and I have had some pretty, pretty knockout, yeah. knockdown, drag out bangers in Japan. Yeah. Let's bring that to the States. Let's get a spotlight on some of that. How different is it working in Japan for you? Not like what, too just different. like that experience in general too. Not not too different. I love working in Japan because mm -hmm. it's so frequent, so constant. I I definitely feel like I'm on a, a different game or like a, a stronger game there because you're just you're wrestling all the time. Yeah, all the time. And then staying in the dojo or staying you know adjacent to it, you've got a ring you know twenty feet from where you sleep. So yeah. <laughs> you're literally thinking about it all the time literally thinking about it all the time there were times when i would just go lay in the ring just for that inspiration or if i found i couldn't sleep i would walk over to the dojo and i'm trusted enough that i kind of like i knew where the key was i was <laughs> i was trusted with privileged information so i would yeah. go into the dojo and you know run the ropes or train and practice different things and just having that constant constant wrestling 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 yeah I felt it just took me to a different level.
where do you think you get your work ethic from? I mean, you seem like you are constantly <laughs> grinding. I mean, even from talking from like your time in college and uh, working in the performing arts to working at the, the printing shop to get out your headshots, like you are always finding a way. Where does that come from? Uh, part my mom and then partly just the way we grew up. Mm -hmm. um, definitely grew up, you know, low, 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 low middle class mm -hmm. or if you will. Yeah. Uh, grew up in the hood. Uh, Mount Pleasant. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Mount Pleasant? <laughs> Mount Pleasant's actually a very nice neighborhood in Toronto, actually. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> yeah. It is now in DC. Yeah. But no, um, just just finding a way to to that's just hood life, <laughs> you know, just grinding, trying to find the avenue. What's gonna work? What's gonna take? What's gonna get you out of here and move you to something better? Yeah. Uh, so growing up that way, for me at least, that translated to how I apply myself in every situation. What is your family dynamic? Crazy. Crazy. I, I, this, these are like my favorite parts of the interview. I'm like, <laughs> tell me about your family. I want about like siblings, your mom, your dad, your grandma. Super crazy. Um, it's it's very intricate, very involved. I'm super close with uh, my mother's side, my mom, my aunt, um, my grandmother, who we lost kind of recently. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, right. I don't mean to be a downer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm super close with them. And uh, we just have a lot of fun. Um, close with my dad. I have a, a younger sister, a little bit closer with her than mm -hmm. some of my older siblings. But we're all, we all pretty get along pretty well. I was going to ask you too, and I wasn't sure um, what, uh, if, if your grandmother was still with us or not, but she's been able to see or had been able to see your yes. success. What was that like for her to be able to see you go through all of these things and to see you on this huge stage doing all this stuff that you guys bonded over? It was it was pretty crazy. And so <laughs> it's kind of funny because because this is all her fault. <laughs> this is all Elizabeth your, Hicks's fault. Oh, Elizabeth Hicks. I was going to say, what is her name? It's okay. all Elizabeth's fault. Um, in fact, that maybe that's what I'll call one of my moves. Elizabeth's fault. There oh, I actually love that. <laughs> That's actually great. Okay. I see that as like a big like leg drop. That maybe, maybe there, that'll be my knee drop off the top. <laughs> yes. I, it's been nameless for a long time. Elizabeth's fault. I, That's so, brilliant. I used to call it FTW okay. for the win in yeah. homage to Taz. Uh -huh. But then we hired Taz and I couldn't use it. So time to move on. So time to move on. Let's there we go. Grandma. There That's we go. Great. I love it. I'll, I'll let JR know. <laughs> Nice. Call it call it Elizabeth's fault. Get it in there. Um, Get her shit in. <laughs> what was the question? I don't even know this. Um, for your grandma to see your success. Yes, see, yes, yes, yes. See this the whole journey that you went on. Did, did you lean on her much during all that? A little bit. It's just like it, any little thing that happened. I would grandma look grandma like running back to her and um they did they did a, a, a like three four page spread on me of all people in a Japanese pro wrestling magazine and I. A fan in Japan brought it to me and I instantly just came home and gave it right yeah. to grandma. Yeah. She cried. She loved it. She was all smiles. But the funny thing was a little bit prior to uh, my continuous going to Japan, she was like, oh, can you stop wrestling? I don't want you to get hurt. Da, 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 da. And I go to Japan, get a little bit of success. And she's bragging and <laughs> showing all her friends and everything. And then AEW comes on and she's like telling him, let's let's put the TV on. <laughs> excuse me i love that i love that grandmas are just the best and it's cool that you've been able to that you have been able to share those moments yeah. with her and she she got to be a part of that what does the rest of your family think of the wrestling world they they have now taken on grandma's legacy of uh -huh. showing off <laughs> <laughs> my mother will find a way to work it into any conversation oh my, God. That's my mom too my gardener just happens to know who john is i'm like oh yeah how'd that come up oh, oh my god like, kills me any literally any conversation she'll be talking to somebody about a new recipe she found for like a, a baked chicken is like and oh, and you know Nyla wrestles on that AEW. <laughs> Mom, what? This has nothing to do with the culinary experience. What? How? Uh, I they don't, love it. Nobody cares about that. God like, <laughs> that's so God funny. bless them, right? I love that. Okay, so you talk about growing up and being on that that lower end of middle class. Um, when did you start to kind of get those stars in your eyes and wanted to have bigger things for yourself and start to feel like you could actually achieve those? It's not always easy to get to that mindset where you're like, how do I get myself out of the situation and give myself the life that I really want to have? I feel like it can be pretty daunting trying to do that. 
<laughs> little bit. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, so I didn't even know this about myself, but one of my old teachers, like pre-K or kindergarten, I don't know. I was, I was like three or four, maybe five, I, like super, super young. Apparently I wanted to be a stunt man growing up. Oh, like great. I wanted to work in like, yeah, like, most kids want to be a doctor or be a movie star. No, I wanted to be the person who gets hit by cars. <laughs> like, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. It, again, didn't know how that was a thing, but like, that's what I wanted to do growing up was do stunts in movies. Yeah. And then middle school, I guess, I discovered theater drama class. I wanted to act. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, well, then I'll just act and, and maybe I'll do stunts. And then I found a Jackie Chan film and I was like, oh, I can totally act and do my own stunts. Yeah. And then when I learned what pro wrestling was, I was like, there it is. Did you ever feel like, um, I, I, I'll use this because I definitely felt this way, almost like foolish trying to tell someone like, oh, I'm going to go be an actress and I'm going to go do these things. Like, did you ever have that sort of like reservation of like, well, why would I feel like I can do that? Like, I always felt weird about telling people that I wanted to do that. And it was always that thing that I was kind of like kept pretty close to myself because it made me feel weird about how other people were going to react to it. Or yeah, just feeling like, why do I feel like I should be able to go and achieve these things? Am I insane for feeling that way? No, not at all. I, it, that's very like, that's a very, very human condition of human emotion. Like you, you always like, you want other people to enjoy what you enjoy. Yeah. So it's like, I get that. Like, there, there was part reservation. Like, I don't want to tell these people, like, yeah. I act. Like, I don't want to tell them that. Like, yeah. you know, and then especially it, <laughs> this, this I, I don't know. You tell your parents what you're doing. They're like, go ahead, act right now. Do do a thing. Do a scene. Like, oh, my God. I can't just start Run. acting. Here right comes now. my monologue. <laughs> yeah. Coming in hot. So, so there, there definitely was that slight reservation. But on the other side of that, I never cared what other people think so yeah. tons of people thought it was stupid tons of people thought well you shouldn't do that there's no way you're gonna do that i didn't care like you say that yeah cool for you i'm still gonna try i'm still gonna push i'm still gonna pursue yeah whatever happens happens but i need to know that i at least try 100 percent. there's nothing worse than that feeling of like i should have done more i could have done more that like hindsight of like oh if i had only made that call or blind right. emailed somebody you never know. Closed mouths don't get fed. They sure do not. And Kenny Omega doesn't just slide into those DMs <laughs> offering up opportunities to sign with a company like AEW. What else do you want to do in the professional wrestling world? Everything. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Um, I would love, obviously, I would love a second title run. Yes. Um, I, at this stage uh, in, in AEW's lineage, I personally would love to bring in some tag titles. Yes. Um, that's just me. Uh, well, not, I shouldn't say that. That's just me. It's a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. Uh, we got to wait for the right time. Yes. You know, you got to wait well, for the right like time. we were just saying, too. It's like finding that right time. Let things percolate a little yeah. bit. But I'm definitely, I'm being impatient about it. Like, I want it right now. Let's do it right now. Who do you want to tag with? <sighs> so many people. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a few. Uh, if you, if you would, if you've been following myself, if you've been following Dark and Elevation, uh, me and Emmy Sakura, mm -hmm. I think we make a great team. Yeah, She's yeah. someone I can trust and rely on. Yeah. Uh, Diamante, our other counterpart. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say Bunny, but her and Penelope have a really cool thing going. They got a thing going on. They got yeah. a thing going on. And, and whilst I have tagged with the both of them, we've done some trio stuff. Yeah. I think they look great together. <laughs> I think they look great together. No, they do. They definitely so, do. So I'll, I'll, I'll let titles. them have that because yeah. I got some options. <laughs> Play the that. field, if you will. Um, your comic book situation. This is crazy to me. To so me too. Can we just like break this down for saying like I'm not a huge comic book person. So what you're working with X-Men yes. and you're bringing back a character. Is this correct? Yes, yes. And it's, it's a Native American character. Insane. Yeah? The whole situation is bonkers how did this happen i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it happened because of wrestling yeah like, everything's wrestling everything's blessed by wrestling yeah. um so uh one of the writers uh my, my partner in this endeavor steve orlando he writes for marauders and like a ton of other stuff that i probably should know that i don't <laughs> but like he's been writing for comics for dc for marvel he's written for everybody he's he's my yoda in all of this yeah um he 
through a couple of tweets, you know, he's like, okay, you know, she's, she's got a gift to gab a little bit, you know, she's kind of witty. Yeah. Uh, she might, she seems kind of nerdy. So he thought maybe, possibly, mm, I don't know. Yeah. Then he saw me come out uh, dressed as Mystique during one of the battle royals. He's like, oh yeah, she's right. definitely going to be on board for this. God, who doesn't love Mystique? Who's right? your favorite Mystique, by the way? Who do you think played Mystique the best? I I don't know. They're all so good for different reasons. Okay. But my favorite mystique is from the cartoon. All right. <laughs> Fine. My my favorite one is from the cartoon. But the guts to be mystique in the movie is like, get it, girls? Yeah, right. Damn, Rebecca Romaine, excuse the f me. Jesus, she looks amazing. I mean, they all look great. They looked like, phenomenal and they killed it every did. single time. Yeah. hundred percent. One hundred percent. But but yeah, so Steve okay, so yeah. Steve saw me. Uh, oh, I love your shoes. I'm so distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve <laughs> saw me come out dressed as Mystique and he he's a wrestling fan. Yeah. So he reached out to me and said, hey, this is what's on the table. This is what we're doing. We're bringing back Thunderbird. Um, do you, would you have any interest in being a part of this? Because he wanted some authentic indigenous voices yeah. attached to the project. Yeah. And I was like, if they'll have me, if Marvel will have me, I absolutely want to be a part of this. Yeah. Uh, they He pitched it to them. He said, she's on board. What's going on? And, like, that's and pretty the next thing you know, amazing. I'm stressing out in my living room, <laughs> writing a script. Now what? Oh, God, now I have to do it. <laughs> but that is like, I mean, what what a crazy world for you to be able to be, a, be attached with the X-Men through Marvel to bring back Thunderbird to like really represent your Native American culture. What does that mean to you? Like, have you really taken time to reflect on like how amazing that is? I try to, but this stuff, everything going on is like so much bigger than me. It's really hard to like grasp that I'm a part of all this. Yeah. But it's super cool to see what it means to other people. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I've, haven't fully processed at all what bringing Thunderbird back has meant for people and the fact that we revamped his costume and gave it a little bit more meaning besides like tassels, headband, native, you yeah, know, yeah. like just give him a strong jaw and send him out there. Like, yeah. no, like we actually put some thought into the character, changed his hairstyle, changed his, uh, his whole aesthetic and to see people pick up on what the changes culturally mean that yeah. warms my heart. Like that makes me feel so good. I'm like, okay, we did the right thing. We're on the right track with this. Yeah. Just seeing people have so much pride in what we've created. Yeah. That's so cool. Like it yeah. pumps me up that you get to do that. It's really, that's like some bucket list shit. Yeah. Like Holy. I didn't, I didn't even know that was on my bucket list. Like it's, it's at the top now. That's yeah. But so like cool. wild, wild. Um, back into some acting stuff for you. So you did a show. Yes. It was a Canadian series. Yes. yes. Did you shoot it in Canada? We shot it in Canada. My people. Yes. My people. <laughs> shout out to Canada. What was your experience doing um, doing this show? Sorry, I'm pulling up the name of the show right called the now. Switch. Called The Switch. Yes. I was going to say The Switch. I thought it was called The Switch. Um, what? Tell me about the show. Um, so have you ever seen uh, Wings? Yes. Okay, it's not like that at all. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to RJ Simpson. Yes, by the I, way. I just fucking <laughs> wins shirts. <laughs> um, it, it was a sitcom, and it kind of explored uh, the the trans, the humorous side of being trans, and also you know, a little bit what it's like, uh, especially in Canada. Yeah. So the story follows a character, Sue, who moves from You're the. Sue. I played Sue. Yeah. I played the title character, or not the title you character, because in the show we called Sue, but like. <laughs> I played uh, uh, the lead character, Sue, who moved from the U.S., moved to Vancouver, Canada, and all her struggles with, like, the housing situation that's going on or was going on. I don't know. I'm not up to speed yeah. on, on yeah. that. Um, but the things that were going on in Canada that wise, as well as, like, trans health care and then just... I would just like to retract my statement of saying my people <laughs> while we're talking about all this horrible shit that's happened. That ain't my shit. That's that's nobody's. Yeah, nobody's. Yeah, uh, except for greedy politicians. No, <laughs> God. But Start um, a whole new podcast <laughs> on that because I am like on one today about that shit. <sighs> but yeah, so it follows her struggles and 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 life and love and her journey. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, first time doing anything sitcommy, so I 
for my research, I like binged Full House and Family Matters and just all yeah. the sitcoms that I grew up on. And it was a lot of fun. I, I don't know. I can't say one bad thing. The only bad thing I can say is that we didn't get picked up for a season two. Right. I, I would love to have done more. How much more representation like that do we need in television? Always and forever. Yeah. Always and forever. Yeah. Um, in every facet, be it race, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation, always and forever, representation absolutely matters. Yeah. Um, and then just seeing strong characters, strong people, uh, knowing that even me as a trans woman, I've inspired cisgendered women, yeah. cisgendered children to, to follow their dreams simply by knowing me, knowing my struggles, they themselves feel empowered in what they do. So representation isn't necessarily always catering to one specific demographic. It's just people seeing your strength and applying it to them. Yeah. What a great way to put that. We'll put a button on that one. Uh, now, I can't me, believe I said something so profound. That was great. What was that? Who, where'd that come from? Grandma, was that you? <laughs> Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. This thank was you. the best. I feel like I could just hang out with you and, and talk of Likewise. all day. Do we have to wrap? I <laughs> know, right? Just keep it going. We don't have anyone after us, do we? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We for sure do. <laughs> they're shrugging their shoulders, but they're like, yes, we actually do. <laughs> well, thank you for hanging out with me. This thank was you. great. I'm really excited for all the stuff that you have coming up um, and just all the continued success in AEW and thank all you, the other you. things that come with that. Thank you very much. It's yeah. been a pleasure. And Bring me back, please. Yes, please. <laughs> 100%.